This episode contains mature content, including death and violence, that may be sensitive for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Remote area of the Safed Quraysh Mountains, Afghanistan, approaching nightfall. <sighs> Peter, my ex, would have said on a normal day I rarely got any sunnier than shades of gray. Today has been far from normal. It's been six hours hiking down this mountainside in the near dark. I've eaten nothing, slept beside a corpse, and spent 15 hours in a cell. So, needless to say, I'm not feeling great. Ugh, thank God. It's Blackhawk. They might think I'm attacking, but my M16 is the best substitute for a flare I have. I aim away and fire a three-round burst. <laughs> Shit! They're not hearing me. I empty the magazine. The helicopter sweeps wide and turns toward me. Don't shoot! My hands wave wildly. My only hope is they see my uniform. The helicopter banks hard. They're landing. Oh, thank God! The pilot spots me first, up in the cockpit with the door swung wide. I run towards him. Shit! Sergeant Beach. I know these guys. They're the crew that dropped me and Colonel Chase up on this mountain in the first place. How'd you get from Bagram to this dust bucket? Bagram? You might have heard of it. We plopped you down there yesterday. I don't elaborate, but climb aboard, trying not to shake as I buckle up and take a comms headset. Everything is crashing down on me. The door code was my daughter's birthday. Valdo and Hicks saw me exit the door 15 hours before I actually did. These pilots flew me to Bagram while I was locked in a cage. Oscar was right. The woman was me. Another me. And she's taken my place. She never expected me to get out alive. So, you gonna tell us how you got here? You wouldn't believe me if I did. Realm presents Overleaper, starring Thora Birch, episode four. See if we're clear to hit that landing zone. Well, Dust Storm ain't left yet, unless I heard. Dust Storm? Like the Veep? Yeah. Vice President's at base. Could have sworn we told you that already. <sighs> the idea that another Audrey is here in Afghanistan impersonating me is still so unbelievable, I keep searching for another explanation. But there is none. Yeah. My memory is lagging, you know, sleep deprivation. So, what did I say when you picked me up before? Okay, I'll play along, Sergeant. You told us to mind our damn business when we asked about Colonel Chase. Then you were hustled off to the Brigadier General Applebaum. But I'm just saying, oh, Jesus! The blast pressure knocks the Black Hawk sideways. The tail kicks right, and I grab for a handhold. The helicopter dives, levels out, then noses up. We're accelerating, gaining altitude to avoid another rocket-propelled grenade attack. Smoke drifts off the tail rotor and fills up the cabin. Bagram, this is Shrimpo UH-60. We're drawing RPG fire. Request the quick strike force in Area 27. Negative. Coming for a landing. All right, we're heading down ASAP. Clear the landing zone. We took some damage. I see the airbase up ahead. I slide open the door to let out some of the smoke. We're losing altitude too fast. Ugh, we're coming in hot. The barracks swoop below, Air Force Two right in front. Hell of a time to crash land. 
If these idiots take out the vice president, they better hope they go down with him. Somehow, we slow down just enough to pull off the landing. Nice yeah. stick work, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Without a backward glance, I jump out of the chopper. And I've already made up my mind on what to do next. I have to get stateside before my doppelganger does. And the best way, well, the fastest way, is on that 757. I'm going to sneak onto Air Force Two. Operation Overleaper, leap day two. 30,000 feet above Central Europe on a commercial flight bound for London. We're not even a quarter of the way to Heathrow, and then another plane to DC after that. I pass the time focused on two people. The first is a short guy in a suit two rows back, nursing his fourth cup of coffee. No briefcase, no laptop, no overhead luggage. I know CIA when I see it. I expected this. I'll shake him easily enough when the time comes. The other person is a girl. Brown hair in a single braid, not more than eight or nine years old. Around the same age Lydia would be. She has the same dimple in her chin. And I hate that I can't think of my daughter without remembering how she died. Dylan Dye. That was the drone operator's name. He flew a Reaper drone on area surveillance, searching for six senior leaders in the Hakoni network. One of those men, unfortunately, decided to drive a moped over a dirt road toward a village called Kanigarum. There was a wedding party he maybe wanted to watch as it passed by. My family and I were there. Kani Gurum, Afghanistan, one year ago. I walked behind the groom's car, Lydia's small hand in mine. Peter walked next to me, generally annoyed. It was the wedding day of my detachment's Pashtun interpreter. I thought it would be fun for them to join. <sighs> How much farther to Kani Gurum? <laughs> Kani Gurum. Five kilometers at most. Ah, uh, this speed, that'll take hours. You got something better to do, Peter? Well, if I could get an internet connection, I could maybe... Mama, can I go over there? Maybe pick poppies for the bride? Oh, I'm sure she'd love wildflowers. But be quick, okay? And stay close. Okay. A moped roared by on the shoulder. I hardly registered it. Look, Peter, it's only the... Fire and smoke rises to my right. It's it's hazy. I can hardly see through the dust. Lydia, I need to find Lydia. Peter clutches at my arms. He's okay. Holy shit. Oh my god. Holy shit. Audrey, where's Lydia? I don't know, Peter. Where's Lydia? Look, I'm gonna find her, okay? Stay here. Just stay here. Stay by the car. I'll be right back. The attack came out of nowhere. My heart pounds in my throat. Stay close, I told her. Maybe she wasn't near it. Maybe she's okay. I desperately search the faces I pass. There's a crater ahead where a field of poppies used to be. No. No, no, no! Lydia! 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 <laughs> I learned later that the president personally authorized that strike. The first step toward war in Pakistan. A war that would waste thousands more lives. But what mattered most was that Lydia was at the bottom of that crater. Dylan Dye, he paid for his mistake. 
one name struck from my list, but there were plenty more. What is it you say? The man next to me, a Turkish pensioner, looks at me as he chews a pastry. I don't think I said anything. <laughs> Stay close to me. That's what you just said. The Canadian on my other side has decided to jump in. Oh, you poor thing. You really need to take better care of yourself, girl. Your hair is falling out all over the place. He holds up a long clump of my brown mane as proof. Shit. I'd known this would happen eventually. The cost of the overleap. But hair loss shouldn't begin until day three. Why is it happening early? What else haven't they told me? I gaze towards seat 9C, where the girl who could be my daughter sits. Unease rips through my chest. What's bothering me? Maybe my feelings over Lydia? Maybe the gaps in information provided to me by the Suviskan scientists? Maybe the assassination I was sent over here to commit? Bagram Air Base, Afghanistan. Smoke burns my eyes, but I keep moving. Field medics run towards the smoking Blackhawk along with the crash and recovery team. The pilot and co-pilot stumble out behind me. Sergeant Beach! Sergeant! I don't turn back. Air Force Two has already begun boarding, and this may be my only chance. Secret Service agents pat down the two photographers that accompanied the vice president for this photo shoot while a sentry dog sniffs their cameras. I need to get on that plane. I'm not sure how, but there's got to be a way. At the far end of the tarmac, the bustle of Air Force flight attendants captures my attention. Olive green jumpsuits, the men clean shaven and the women wearing their hair up, all waiting their turn for the Secret Service inspection. Perfect. I ditch my helmet on the ground, tie my hair into a bun. A middle-aged master sergeant, his arms folded, is lecturing his staff. You spilled three drinks the last time, Myra. If you can't get this right, you're out once we get back to Andrews. Myra screws it up wherever she goes, Gil. You know she... This is between me <gasps> and Myra, Sydney. You're gonna keep a steady hand, Myra? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Very good. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if this was your last flight. Enjoy it. Whatever, Sydney. The Master Sergeant walks off, and Myra hurries behind him, leaving Sydney standing apart from the rest of the group. Now's my chance. Are you Sydney? Yes. Damn well better be. I just got off the phone with Andrews Air Force Base, a woman by the name of Margaret. Baggy Maggie? No jokes. She wants you off the flight and into street clothes. Come with me. She's on the horn now. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I think there's been a mistake. Sydney! We need to get you changed and cleaned up. Don't worry, I'll speak with your master sergeant, uh, Gil... Gil Filtzfeldt? That's right, Filtzfeldt. I'll tell him we've had a 10.01 and you've been pulled away. He'll know what it means. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> this is going to be easier than I thought. Five minutes later, I'm running toward the tarmac, waving my arm to the Secret Service to wait. Sydney's in the barracks behind me, bawling her eyes out and searching for a phone with Baggy Maggie on the other end. Meanwhile, I'm in her flight suit, and I have to say, it looks great. You're late. We're about to board the vice president. You're Sydney Sheldon? Hey, Gil needs you up here. Duty calls. A metal detector wand across my front and back, and he waves me aboard. All right, so we're gonna have to... What happened to Sydney? She got pulled out. A 1001. I'm a replacement. Gil will know what it means. Okay. Myra nods and bustles off. I take in Air Force Two. It is fancy. To my left, at the nose of the plane, is the presidential suite, guarded by a Secret Service agent, even though old Dust Storm isn't yet on board. To my right, the kitchens. I head that way. Oh, good. Someone's here. A male flight attendant greets me as I make it to the restaurant-style kitchen. He offers me a tray with Stumptown cream and sugar. Okay. All right. 
You're on coffee duty, new girl. A motorcade just pulled up. I squint out the galley window. There he is, in full splendor. Daniel Strong. Old dust storm. Well, you gonna stare all day or get that ass to work? It's been a long time since anyone talked to me like that, and longer still since I let them leave the scene with all their teeth. Sure, on it. Goodness, where do they find these people? Once out of the kitchen, I find myself in a hall that runs alongside a conference room filled with men and women in suits staring at a large screen. I'm not a fan of the officer class, but these people? Advisors, press, secretaries, pundits, and pollsters are even lower in my esteem. These are the decision makers. <laughs> and we on the ground have to clean up the messes they make at 30,000 feet. Coffee? Yeah, I'll take one. A reporter in a too tight shirt lifts a dainty finger at me. There's a tan line where a wedding band once was. I shouldn't judge. Wasn't too long ago my ring finger looked about the same. Oh, uh, cream, please. Are we uh, departing soon? Any minute, sir. The vice president is just boarding now. A buoyant day for the market as Wall Street shrugs off a recent string of domestic terrorism. Ooh. You hear about that? He nods his head toward the 60-inch television on the far wall. CNN going wild. Ticker tape along the bottom, footage of smoke and nighttime. I can't make anything out. What happened? IntelliChip headquarters is what happened. Some kind of explosion. The whole building came down. Jeez. You think she'd know about that? The conference had hundreds of the brightest minds in physics. Nobel Prize winners, Panofskys, Einsteins. Many of them working on just one thing. Do you know what that was? The multiverse. Maybe it's not a terrorist attack. Maybe it's unrelated to what happened to me and to what happened in Philly two days ago. A coincidence. But I don't believe in coincidences. Hey, you. Mr. Strom is up in a suite. He needs some coffee. And you better not spill a drop. Be right there. Hold up. You can't go in there. OK. Do you want to bring the vice president his coffee? Marty. Is that my Java? Send her on through now. Marty steps aside, eyes elsewhere. And I'm through. Into a room with couches and curtained windows. You're new. I can always spot them. Under my feet, I feel the plane yaw on the runway. It takes all my concentration to pour the brown liquid without spilling. And then we take off, hurtling forward. I finish pouring just as Air Force Two takes to the air, climbing at an impossibly steep rate for such a weighed down aircraft. Then, the entire room heaves. Jesus, what the? Pitching left, rolling that same direction. An evasive maneuver. I fly against the far wall, the coffee tray crashing around me. A buzz from the wings. Air Force Two has deployed its flares and chaff. The explosion is strong enough that the plane is knocked higher into the air. What the hell was that, Marty? RPG, Mr. Vice President. Get down, sir. Okay, okay, okay. You, out. I crawl past the broken glass and brown stains on the carpet. Hands and knees. The floor vibrates as we soar higher. The pilot's goal is to get out of range of the next rocket, if there is one. And I realize I'm shaking. I don't think old Dust Storm was the mark here. The target was me. You're listening to Overleaper, starring Thora Birch. Overleaper is a Realm original production. Realm, your portal to another world. Listen away. Overleaper is a Realm original production, created and written by Sam Bush. Produced by Diana M. Foe, Fred Greenhalge, and Haley Wagreich. Additional story production by Nicole Otto and Marco Palmieri. Directed by Fred Greenhalge. Executive produced by Molly Barton, Marcy Wiseman, 
and Julian Yap, starring Thora Birch as Audrey Beach and the Overleaper, Yolis Arroyo, Jordan Batiste, Peter Burkrot, Janet Boris, Gilbert Glenn Brown, Hector Louis Bustamante, Chris Cleveland, Ryan Coyle, Stephanie Diaz, Richard Doyle, Kate Elefante, Mark Engelhart, Maricilda Garcia, Anthony Grant, John Kapalos, Inte Kim, Chuck Karaukles, Richard McGonagall, Alex Ruiz, Lorenzo Villanueva, Cecily Williams, Michael Wolner, and I'm Graham Rowett. Sound design and mixing by Rory O'Shea. Original score and composition by Yaron Grauman. Production manager, Alexis Latshaw. Production coordinator, Angela Yee. Casting by Sunday Bowling and Meg Mormon. Cover art by Kindle Thomas. Executive in charge for Realm, Mary Acidolahi. Find more shows like Overleaper by following Realm on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or at realm.fm. Realm.fm.